spoilers for Dune 2. Guess who just finished the second Dune book? It was me. I did, you dolt. It was me the whole time. Audiobook. Still a book. Right? Right? It was narrated by Scott Brick and some others. Um, for overall, the narration is pretty monotone. It's all kind of the same. Um, I, I think it's Scott Brick that um, narrates most of the book. And then all of a sudden you'll get like a couple of other voices in there. And it's a little jarring. They kind of did that with the first book. But with the first book, they had the narrator as the narrator. Let's just say it's Scott Brick, because I'm pretty sure that's who it is. And then they had the others that were in there voicing some of the male characters. Like Paul. Paul has his own voice actor. And then all of a sudden they stopped doing that. In the middle of the book. The middle of the first book. They just stopped having Paul have his own voice. And then, Jesus Christ, this dog is going crazy. Anyway, so, and then you have Lady Jessica, who had her own voice, right? And Chani, I think, was the same voice actress. And, and then they just stopped. They just stopped doing that. I don't know why they did that. I don't know if it was a budget thing. I don't know if it was just because they... I mean, the second book was released in 2007. Not... The book, but the audio book was released in 2007, so maybe they just didn't know how to do it back then? But this is the book that's supposed to show that Paul is the anti-hero and not the actual hero. So I may go into a little bit of spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled for Dune Messiah, that is the second book in the Dune series, I don't know, read the book. It's pretty good. It's pretty fun. It's kind of hard to get through, but it's fun. So I think the biggest points in this are his sister, Alea, who is kind of here and there when it comes to, like, the morality spectrum. Because he, he for the most part, he seems to be only worried about Chani, Paul. Paul seems to only worry about Chani the whole time. That's kind of like his big thing. There's a whole kind of love triangle between him, Chani, and um, Princess... I was going to say Alonwi. That's not correct. Princess Iralong. That's, that's, who, that's, that's who I was thinking of. So Paul politically went with um, Iralong just, just to get himself on the throne. So that, that's kind of the, the moment where he becomes kind of like... Not a bad guy, but just a bad guy. Does that make sense? Obviously, Chani doesn't like that. Chani hates Iralong, hates her guts, uh, and all she wants to do is have. Uh, Iralong wants to have Paul's kid because that's like the heir to the throne, right? So it's this whole. What do you call it? I don't know. It's this whole thing where it's like, oh, we need an heir. We need an heir. And then he's like, no, I'm only going to have a kid with Chani because she's my love. Blah, blah, blah. That. And as we know, Duncan Idaho. <laughs> rhyme. Duncan is dead. But there's the there's this secret, like, service almost. I It's it's hard to pick out, like, what they are. But they're called the Thalixu. Thalixu? I don't know. I'm not pronouncing that right. But they have... Um, a face changer they have a fish guy in a tank filled with spice they 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 are in cahoots with the uh, reverend mother of the Betty Gesserit and the, I don't know they're a little weird they're a little I don't really understand them very much maybe they're, they're they're like a separate kind of entity I guess than the Imperium they're part of the Imperium but not really I don't know it's really confusing ah Interesting characters, though. Very interesting characters. But they were able to reanimate Duncan and turn him into something called a Gola, which is kind of basically what it sounds like. It's like a golem of Duncan. But it's his body. It's his real body. But they've reanimated it and put 
like these robot eyes into his head that kind of just signifies that he's a Gola. And then he is sent as a gift by the Talaxu as, I, again, it's like, I don't know, because his whole goal, Duncan's goal, which he's called hate in that moment, he is supposed to kill Paul. Like, that's his goal. He even outright says it, because when he got reanimated, he got turned into a Mentat as well, like Thufir, if you guys remember him. So he, like, he can't lie. And he's, like, a human computer, basically, which thousands of years ago, computers were, like, outlawed. Like, they or AI, rather. Which, huh, kind of a funny time where we're at, right? There's a whole book about it, apparently. I, I'll get to it eventually, but I'm going to finish the main story before I do any of that side stuff. So hate is supposed to kill Paul. That's what he's destined to do. But he's conflicted because he still has the memories of Duncan and he can't get rid of it. And he's very confused. But for the most part, he is the Mentat hate. And that's spelled H-Y-T. H-A-Y-T. My bad. H-A-Y-T. Hate. That's how you spell his name. Anyway, moving on. So political stuff ensues. Uh, the Bene Gesserit uh, Reverend Mother has been banished from Arrakis or Dune. And um, she is again in the background trying to diddle her little fingers over everything. Trying to um, trying to side with the... Uh, um, oh God, there's so many names. The, the Laksu. Um, so that they can take over the empire again and destroy paul and chani they don't like chani they don't like paul paul's being kind of a dick here and there but for the most part he's just a guy you know he's just the emperor but some major points that happen uh his sister falls in love with duncan uh duncan becomes duncan again after you know being hate and so his memories come back so he becomes duncan again uh the i believe the face changer gets killed i think paul slices his eyes open or something and he dies i'm pretty sure i'm pretty again like a lot happens in a four hour uh audiobook seriously it was only four hours the last book was like 20 or maybe it was seven the, 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 I know for a fact that the first book is 20, but this book was, uh, like, way shorter. Um, apparently somebody, I, I, it's not really directed at who had it or who did it, but there was uh, somebody had launched Atomics. And this specific one is called a Stone Burner, I believe. I believe it's called Stone Burner. It's basically a nuke like it, it a nuke of like a pillar of fire that's basically what it is and i've seen i've tried to look it up to get a visual representation of what it is it's really hard to find but it looks like somebody had drawn it out in a comic and it's basically just like a pillar of fire so paul with some of his guys uh witness that and most of them get blinded or die including paul he gets blinded. His eyes burn out of his sockets, basically. And so if you're blinded in the uh, the way of the Fremen, you're a lost cause. You have to go back out to the desert, give your body to, or give your water, that's the most important thing, give your water back to Arrakis, back to the worms, yada, yada, yada. So basically, as an emperor, he's not an emperor anymore. And he's got to give his... Uh, he's got to give his body back to the thing. So he does. You know, he 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 has two kids with Chani. Chani dies through childbirth, and the two kids. One is named Leto the second, which apparently some shit happens with him, and his daughter. So twins, kind of like Luke and Leia, were named. Uh, basically in the Fremen tongue, it's called Spoils of War. That's what her name means. And I'm running out of time here. But basically, uh, Paul dies. A lot of people die. Uh, his sister falls in love with Duncan. And uh, Stilgar's still there. Stilgar, you know, he's chilling. You know, whatever. But it was real. It was weird to get through. The politics are weird. But it was, it was good. I'm excited for the next movie. Book. 
next book. I am excited for the next movie, though.